So we're now on the northern hill next to Carahan Tepe. Now traditionally, this is called Ketchley Tepe or Ketchley Hill, but there's dubiousness about that because um, Ketchley is actually the original name of Carahan Tepe and they had to change the name to stop looters coming in, things like this. But the original name basically of this general area is Ketchley. It's actually a sign next to the home of Ismail and his family. But here is the first thing you come to when you climb in the hill from the south and you find two giant hold stones over this huge bell-shaped kind of chamber which we think was to collect water. So whether this was Neolithic or whether this is Roman, we don't know because we know there are Roman remains up on the hill. But we're here with Andrew Collins and our Turkish friends and we want to just show you aspects that we find all over the hill here. Andrew's done a lot of research on this. This aligns um, with this where Cygnus would set behind Ketchley Hill, this hill from Karahan Tepe. Uh, amongst other things, there's a square kind of rock cut area and the numerous other things. We're gonna look at some caves in particular. So Andrew's gonna jump in and kind of show us around, but I wanted just to introduce you to what we have here. And here is where we're gonna be going right now. And that's the huge bell-shaped chamber the giant monoliths with the holes carved in because these are like kind of the hold stones we do find all over these sites including Karahan Tepe. Anyway we're going to go walking up the hill this is the way we're going to go up and we'll show you different aspects of it as we approach the peak. Oh there are actually grooves carved out of the rock here. That's interesting. Look at these. And we have another underground area just here as well. And we have this. And as Andrew just said, this is like one cart rut, a single cart rut going up the hill. Well, that is interesting. And we'll follow the path of it. I didn't notice this before. Oh, that is interesting. Look at this. So this has obviously been used to collect water into these underground parts we just looked at. So whether this is Neolithic, pre-pottery, or whether it's Roman, because we know Romans were up here, we just don't know. There's no evidence. All the archaeologists say everything up here on this particular hill is Roman, but we're not so sure. Another bit there as well. Uh, here we are at uh, Kitchele, otherwise known as Karahan Tepe. Um, and uh, here with Hugh and our guide and uh, uh, the local guy. And we are going to have a look at the cave here. I'm suitably uh, um, covered up uh, so as not to uh, attract uh, the interest too much of the spiders and other creatures that might inhabit this place. Uh, so uh, uh, here we go. I mean, all I can say is that I can't see any evidence of uh, human activity down there specifically. However, the shape of the entrance into the second area, which is probably about 10, 12 feet in, is shaped like an oval, which could easily be construed by people of the past as a, as a vulva and an entrance into some kind of um, womb-like structure. Then you reach the end, and when you reach the end, you have to turn right through this keyhole shaped um, hole, which uh, is very reminiscent of the uh, keyhole shaped uh, holes in the caves at Giza. Well, I've got as far as I'm, I'm gonna go because it's infested with bees. 
um, but I think I've gone as far as I possibly can at this time without uh, uh, attracting too much undue attention from the uh, from the local insect uh, culture. So I think we'll, we'll move on to the next cave now. So here we have one of the caves of Karahan Tepe. This hill is kind of called Ketchley Hill or Ketchley Tepe. That's the kind of original name of Karahan Tepe in reality. But here we have a series of really intricately rock cut hypogeum caves, a whole temple area we believe on top and numerous other features which we're going to take a look at. Before. Over there is Karahan Tepe. But we're not there at the moment, we are here, which is the other hill on the same farm. The farm is known as Ketchele, and there is a, um, a tepe that is well known for its caves. And I'm pretty certain that these caves would have been known about and used by the Neolithic peoples here 10 to 11,000 years ago. Uh, just on the floor, you can find uh, you know, flint tools which date to that era and there is other structures on the top which probably are Neolithic as well um, and if we go inside these caves you'll see if we can keep out of the dung and the mess uh, that there is carved recesses and if these were simply you know created by farmers or shepherds I don't see why those carved recesses would be there so let's have a look inside and see what we find. This one here is kind of got this beautiful doorway. It's got shaping in the corners and much more. Let's get inside there. This is the one that seems to have more detail carved into it. It smells of bat guano. We just came in from there and yeah, you can see some of the shaping in here. And it's thought that these were kind of inhabited by the jinn, like the kind of spirit beings, almost like fairies really, of uh, ancient Kurdish tradition and Arabian tradition. But yeah, it's fascinating that these here could have been where the people from Karahan Tepe actually lived. They actually had kind of base up here rather than you know wooden structures and things like this most of this looks sort of natural in the sense that not a lot's going on obviously there are certain recesses here and then this one goes into a second chamber which we'll have a look at but I mean there are clearly niches carved here like here for instance uh, these probably would have held oil lamps of some description. Again, we can't say when they would have been created, but they would have been done for that purpose. And then if we go into here, we see that there's a, another niche at the back. And stones have actually been piled up inside it further emphasizing the fact that it may have had some kind of function and probably was carved. Now as to the direction as we come in we're facing roughly towards the east so this is a, a, a niche in that direction towards the east. Um, now you can see that the corners of this chamber are very clearly being cut uh, and dressed to a degree uh, and that they are rectilinear in form. That's not natural. Somebody has cut this, somebody has created this chamber and again here in this corner which would be the southwestern corner you've got another right angled area so 
really this is you know almost a square shaped chamber with an opening that uh, has got an archway we can't say when this would have been created but I have no reason to doubt that the Neolithic peoples of Karahan would have been here and would have seen this hill as in some way special perhaps as a place of the ancestors a pla perhaps as a place of contact during experiential rituals and uh, practices like that but let's now have a look at the second of the caves This is the entrance to the second of the cave. I mean, it's only about um, 10 meters away from the other one. So they are probably almost join in some way as far as their uh, south and north walls are concerned. But this one is a little bit more complicated. There's like an opening um, ante chamber, if you like. Then you step down into the main chamber and this one is much larger and it has a window facing out that they put rocks in to try and obviously keep out the wind. I do know that these caves have been used uh, to uh, keep safe animals during winters but that's only something in relatively modern times and here on the east wall of this great chamber there are a series of three niches uh, they're not natural they've very clearly been carved the one in the middle is similar to the niche that we saw in the first cave that we entered um, and this carved recess here could almost be seen as grave like in appearance uh, and there is always a possibility that these could have contained uh, human remains at some point. So this is the main large chamber. But if we go into the other chamber here. This is another I mean, it's, a, it's, it's too small even for a chamber, but it's like a recess. And once again, it's, it's on the eastern side, away from the main entrance. And we can quite clearly see that this, once again, is a human construction. This is not natural. So if we come out of here, try not to bump our head. How do we assess all of this? Well, there's nothing to say that this was Neolithic. There is nothing to say, however, that Neolithic peoples were not responsible for at least beginning these caves and the cave chambers relating to them. But I would suspect they have been used in much later times, probably during the Roman period, uh, and then quite clearly from the medieval period onwards to the present day where they've been in the hands of uh, local shepherds, farmers that have used them to shelter their animals at winter. So this is what is on offer at Cicelli Tepe, but there is other features and structures here as well and let's go to those next. This is somewhere that we call the snake pit. And there's a reason behind that. And that being that the owners of the farm here at Ketchily said that the caves were quite literally haunted by snakes. Uh, they meant physical snakes in theory. And so when I first explored this in 2015, 
I had full protective covering from head to foot and went down on a ladder which we'd purchased shortly beforehand from Shanlurfa. Okay, this is where we uh, put our, our hands in the fate of uh, Allah uh, to, to make sure that we have enough ladder. Okay, so we have to... Uh, right, okay, we are just about to go down what we... Uh, what we're calling uh, the the snake pit, um, and uh, obviously what we've got here is a hole which is um, about three quarters of a metre by just under, so it's just oval, but it goes vertically down. There's a drop of approximately uh, two metres seventy from my previous calculations. If you can hold on to that, once I go down, I appreciate it. And. Obviously, uh, Karahan is, is over there, uh, and uh, whoop, we do this uh, for science. Okay. Okay. Right. Down yeah, we're down already, and this is a, a perfectly round bell shape this is unquestionably being cut out I can see the cut marks it's a uh, hue looking through the opening and um, I mean I don't know how deep this goes but well, another one there uh, thankfully there are no animals uh, alive there any insects or creatures of the natural world there are many, many boulders here. There's another set of teeth down there of an animal. These are probably goats, I would say, that have fallen down into here. I can't see anything else. Okay, right. Um, just been inside uh, what we're calling the snake pit, uh, due to the presence here in the past of snakes. Um, and basically you have a perfectly round entrance hole cut into the limestone bedrock this is probably about three quarters of a, of a meter in diameter um, slightly ovoid and it drops down to a huge pile of rocks mostly limestone some of them are fragments of basalt which is volcanic uh, that's at a depth of around uh, two meters seventy but the pile of rocks is at least a metre, maybe a metre and a half down to the edges, at the edge of the rock pile, um, which suggests that it does drop down to at least four metres. The, the, the actual um, diameter of the interior is uh, at least four and a half paces, so roughly around four and a half metres. Um, so, it, in fact, it's four and a half metres down probably and about four and a half metres across. So it's a perfect shape. Now, although it might be argued that this is uh, a grain storage uh, place, um, I would say there's also a likelihood that this is uh, extremely ancient and was for some kind of ceremonial ritual function in the past. Uh, I mean, you could have sat down in here, watched the stars pass overhead at the zenith point, uh, or obviously you could have um, create done shamanic experiences and things like this down here so uh, I don't think it should be discounted plus there are entrances like this into very tiny little uh, hollows at Gobekli Tepe and the fact that this is so close to Karahan Tepe which is just across there I think we shouldn't dismiss the fact that this could date back to that time. There's clear um, uh, human uh, carved marks down the walls where uh, the whole thing's been hollowed out so there's no question that, that this is human made possibly that created from some kind of um, you know natural fissure I would say now you can see the chamfering on the walls I'm not sure whether this was done by metal or whether it was done by stone but they're very clear at the base there is a lot of bones uh, no doubt of animals that have fallen in there or been thrown in there. You know, you've got skulls and you know leg bones, etc. Uh, I didn't find anything to suggest that this was Neolithic. And indeed, it could be a grain store. It could have been for the storage of water, some kind of cistern. Um, 
but equally it could go back much earlier and the reason why I say that is because directly behind it you have this carved out niche um, which is what probably about uh, a meter up to here and slightly over uh, a meter and a half in width I would say and this has been done on purpose by someone in the past we're not sure who but all I can say is that if you stand with your back towards the, the, the rear of this niche, you look straight out towards Karahanta Bay. There is no better standing place to look at that. And that suggests strongly to me that this is of Neolithic origin. Right, we've climbed up slightly higher on Kechali Tepe and we're finding more and more carved bits and pieces. Uh, we've got here an area where uh, there's certainly a depression that's been caused through a rectilinear carving out of the bedrock. It's possible that a very small T pillar could have come out of this, this location. Uh, I think I have read that the archaeologists believe that this could have been used as a quarry site and that is very possible but there's not that much evidence of quarrying of the type that you see on the west side of Corahantapay so if it if it was used as a quarry it's not used very much I don't think you find uh, flint chippings some made of chert um, they're very quite they're quite crude in all honesty they're not like the type of stone tools that you find by the hundreds if not thousands on Corahan itself so I think that this whole hill was seen as like a sacred spot I think that it was a place of the ancestors uh, it faces out towards the north northwest as you stand on Corahan and in around 9000 BC you would have seen the stars of Cygnus and behind them or with them the northern opening of the Milky Way's dark rift um, that would have been fully visible using Cacelli Tepe as a foresight as the term is used in archaeoastronomy and I think that's really really important and also the orientation from the Great Ellipse structure AD at Karahan into the Pillar Shrine structure AB is perfectly exactly the same alignment that it is from the top of Karahan to this location. It's almost as if the interconnected structures that you see there all form part of that same alignment towards the stars of Cygnus but also of the northern opening of the Milky Way's dark rift. But as we have seen we're not just dealing with stars anymore we're dealing with the solstices both the summer and the winter uh, and this seems to have been important to the people at Corahan relating to the cycles, measuring the movement of the sun uh, and almost synchronising into the mechanisms of the cosmos. We're coming towards the northern end of Ketchali Tepe now and here just before the land starts sloping down away towards the north there is this structure that we see here so it is a series of blocks uh, unhewn that have been put in a half moon shape but beyond them is a second um, wall of in some cases even larger blocks and to me this is very clearly some kind of sacred space some people might say that it's an observation spot uh, and there would have been a wall a, a linear wall behind it completing this whole shape almost like a half of a moon basically but there is another interesting feature about this um, and that's the fact that um, that you can see where is it unless I'm making it up ah unless it was there 
they may have taken it out there was what looked like the top of a uh, a T pillar uh, just sticking out of the ground uh, it may well be that that's what they've investigated here but that you know if it was then unfortunately it probably wasn't the case but look at this here this is looks like it's actually hewn uh, again it's not a, a T pillar but it does look as if it has been cut and deliberately placed here and so what would have been the function of this half moon site well you'd have been looking out I think that direction you may have been looking towards the south but I think it's much more likely you're looking towards the north and what do we see if we look towards the north this incredible hill a tepe directly in front of us the highest spot in the whole of the region from which you can see Shanlurfa you can see south into Syria you can see Karahan itself you can see the important extinct volcano of Karajadar which is between here and Diyarbakar and from what we've heard this is a very very important place that may well also have been a place of significance to the Neolithic peoples of this region and we're going to investigate that tomorrow. Right, and just as the hill slopes away towards the north, we come upon a structure that I find very, very interesting. And we're calling it the Rock Temple. And it is rectilinear in shape, in other words, roughly rectangular. Uh, it's cut out of the bedrock to at least half a metre maybe more once the soil is removed um, it's blocked on its western side and i think that that's quite deliberate so that it means that it faces either towards the east which makes some kind of sense or if we look on the north side we see that there are steps almost like a bench and this could well be part of a niche that allowed you to face towards the north or of course it could be somewhere where you sat uh, it just might be an enclosure uh, um, which definitely dates to the period of the creation of the the other enclosures at Karahan Tepe itself now what we need to try and do whilst we're here is established roughly its size but also whether there's any evidence of any t-shaped stones actually at this 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 site certainly there's a cut block just a matter of, of 20 paces up to the summit um, but clearly we want to look around here and see what else we can find so we'll have a look now I would say that there is uh, every chance that this dates back to the same phase of activity as the monumental architecture at Karahan Tepe and Gobekli Tepe. And uh, we've just established also that it is aligned almost perfectly north to south. Certainly that's coming out magnetic I presume. Um, but you know we'll obviously try and have a look at it more specifically and that also suggests that there was some kind of purpose behind its construction. It may well have been used as a quarry to take to remove the limestone for use to create the T-shapes on Karahan itself but it may well have continued in use as some kind of um, enclosure. Enclosure which uh, which which may have had a function looking at the horizon in in area on the north side it has a raised platform like a stepped platform area uh, that also suggests to me that something's going on in the north here uh, but this may have simply be the product of the uh, the quarry in here but obviously there's an extension here to the north almost as if like there's a there's a, um, a holy of holies if you like here actually in the north there's nothing like that on the southern side whatsoever
yeah, I think what we're being shown here is some kind of grave. But I, I, one thing I will touch. say, the one thing that I will say is that this is very, very similar to the um, to the pile of stones and hole on the top of Karahan Tepe itself. There's something similar to that there. Uh, and this to me suggests that, uh, you know, this might be related. But I'm not necessarily convinced that this is Neolithic. This could be something slightly later. But the, the enclosed area there, or, the, or the, the rectangular quarry, I would say definitely is Neolithic. I have no doubt in my mind about that, I don't think. We're here at the uh, Kecheli farm at Karahan Tepe and um, we've just been shown uh, three large stone uh, bowls which uh, apparently were all found at Car on Karahan, yeah, yeah, all of them, one, two, three, all yes. from Karahan and I mean clearly these date back uh, I would say to the Neolithic era and are probably 10,000 years old. Uh, what exactly they would have been used for, we can only but speculate. They may have been used to contain grain, they may have been used to contain a liquid, maybe water, uh, maybe blood, um, or even beer. Beer would have been manufactured by this time, so it's a chance that they would have contained, uh, you know, some kind of um, alcoholic beverage. Uh, but it's obviously great that they've been preserved. I'm quite surprised to find them here. I've never been seen. They've never been shown to us before, uh, and it's just quite a, a wonderful discovery again. On top of the many others that we've seen uh, today. Okay, we've just seen three of these huge stone bowls at uh, the Cacelli farm at uh, Karahan Tepe, but now we see two more. Both of them are broken. One of them is of quite extraordinary size. Uh, we can see that they have been made out of huge single boulders of limestone. Um, but I think what's the most important point about these artefacts of history is their age. Now, if you were to have found these, uh, let's say, away from this site where we know that there was activity going on over 10,000 years ago, and that that activity almost certainly ceased, at this point and then did not resume until a lot um, of time after this is the fact that you probably wouldn't consider that these were actually 10,000 years old. I think that's the significance because that is exactly what they are. They're 10,000 years old or more. Um, I think that's quite remarkable and it is important to give every consideration to a greater antiquity of objects like this when they are found.